Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, it is definitely possible. Hey everyone. So something that's been on a number of people's minds and I definitely have received a number of comments and questions about it is getting Windows 7 on a B550 based motherboard and obviously using a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 generation CPU, third or fourth generation CPU. And well, to give you some good news so far, if you haven't, if you didn't get the hint from the earlier little clip, it is actually possible to get it to work on a B550 motherboard. A little difficult, but let me see how best I can go ahead and describe the entire process for you. You can see here, our test board here is going to be a board I actually just did a review on very recently. The MSI MPG B550 Gaming Plus motherboard, and this is actually going to be using a 3700X Ryzen CPU 8 core right up there. So let's go ahead and uh, before we actually get started, I'm going to explain a couple little things here. Obviously we're going to go ahead and do some settings over here to make sure that boot is also allowing for legacy boot up as well too. If this is actually stuck on UFI, you may not be able to actually get this to work correctly. Another thing you want to do as well too, if you're unable to sh uh, select any sort of legacy boot up, just go ahead and change this particular BIOS mode setup to obviously be in CSM and not just UAFI. Otherwise, you won't be able to actually be able to change that setting here. So before we get started, I just wanted to actually mention real quick, there's actually two methods to really accomplishing this. And I've actually described both of them in two different videos previously, as well as mentioned it to many people who've asked how to really get this to go. One method is obviously to have drivers slipstreamed into your Windows 7 installation, which uh, I won't say really say it's a complex process, but can be a little bit out of reach for some people. Uh, second method here would be also just to install Windows 7 directly and just have some drivers standing by, which should probably get this to work. Now, this is probably the most common method. I've actually used this very early on to get Ryzen to work first generation, even second generation Ryzen to work on earlier chipset motherboards, such as the X370, X470, and other motherboards as well too, such as the B450. Now, obviously there's been a couple little hiccups here. One of the biggest hiccups you'll run into is when installing Windows 7 during the process, your hard drive may not be recognized. And obviously using a little driver, having it standing by will help you get this resolved. The only problem is um, there is an occasional time when installing, and even though you have your driver handy, your SATA driver, the hard drive still not picked up. But oddly enough, while you're looking for the driver itself, you can see that the installation is picking up the hard drive uh, that you're at the, or in this case, the SATA, the SSD that you're trying to install Windows 7 on. This has actually happened a number of times and I've actually experienced it myself. There's one or two ways to really avoid this, but considering uh, it's a hit and miss sometimes, method three is actually pretty solid for the most part. And that involves installing Windows 7 on an older or legacy computer that doesn't have any issues. Uh, and once you're done there, just go ahead and transfer the hard drive into this computer right here. Let me take that back. Uh, obviously, you may be able to install this on even the first or second gen Ryzen computer. As long as your Windows 7 installation does recognize your hard drive with very little effort, this, method, this third method will work pretty uh, seamlessly. And once your Windows 7 installation is complete, right after the part where the setup is pretty much done and the computer reboots and now you're at the section where you add your name and computer name, time zone, Wi-Fi, etc., etc. That's where you go ahead and turn it off and just basically just yank that drive and just put it into this computer here. Obviously, if you're going to be installing Windows 7 directly, these little settings right over here are pretty essential to actually get the boot order over here and also to be booting up in legacy mode as well too. So it looks like uh, we're all set here. Now just to save some time, I am gonna use method three. So I've already installed Windows 7 on a separate SSD on another computer. I believe this was a Lenovo based computer. So, you know, pardon me if you actually see a couple of Lenovo logos everywhere, but no big deal. It's just a Windows 7 installation. You can always remove those anyway. On that particular hard drive, I have also copied over a couple of drivers and some other stuff as well too. I'm gonna put links below as well. Basically, one thing I got copied over is a chipset driver. This is basically a driver I just downloaded literally off AMD's website fairly recently. 
And obviously, you know, if you try looking for a B550 chipset driver, you're only going to see Windows 10. So I just downloaded the chipset driver for an X470, which pretty much is almost the same file, except this one's more geared for Windows 7. I believe uh, this uh, chipset driver pretty much has drivers for all chipsets in one installation package. Another thing I did also copy over is modified USB drivers, USB 3 drivers for Windows 7 for this particular chipset and also the uh, other chipsets as well too. This is very important because obviously with no USB control, you really won't be able to <laughs> really manipulate anything you have connected to this computer except a PS2 mouse. And that's, that's obviously does lead me to another thing. I do have a PS2 mouse connected to this particular board here and uh, this board does have a PS2 uh, port. What if your computer does not have a PS2 port? You can always get your hands on a PCI Express uh, add-in card that does give you the ability to use a PS2 port, or possibly even one that has old, old traditional fashioned USB 2.0 ports. And it's really important because the USB ports on this particular board here are being, are being controlled by the CPU itself. Um, not so much the chipset. And that being said, this is obviously an, an unsupported CPU for Windows 7. We're going to run into issues. Using a separate controller card or add-in card with USB ports, that's actually being controlled directly by the card itself. And being that it's USB 2 legacy ports, you definitely will have much better luck. To be, obviously, to have everything work much better, a PS, PS2 port will probably do the trick here. So this board does have a PS2 port. Hence why I'm able to use a PS2 mouse. Just uh, bear in mind, this uh, I do have this little wireless keyboard, which is USB, which is not going to be working here. So anyway, um, other drivers. I did obviously copy over Windows 7 SP1 installation. This is actually, my thumb drive does have a Windows 7 installation that's just regular with no SP1. So I did install, I did copy over the SP1 installation file, which is actually quite important. There's also a Windows 7 update file which you'll have a link for below as well too, that will allow for drivers, modified drivers to be installed without hitch. And I can definitely mention the issue I ran to originally before I even installed that file. I also have a couple of other little installation files as well too, based on some issues I run into when doing this process, and they may become handy for you during this whole process. So let's go ahead and reboot this computer. I'm just gonna basically just do a control delete on the keyboard right over here. Now mind you, when I said I copied these files over, I literally took it from the host computer that I installed Windows 7 on, copied it over to basically just attach it with a USB converter, a little useful adapter, and uh, just copied over the files in a separate folder, and poof. So right now we are booting up a fresh Windows 7 installation on this SSD. You're going to see here, it's going to be asking me for the first time setup and asking me also to enter a name and everything else here. There we go. That was a little too bright for a moment. So you'll see here, I do have this keyboard plugged into this board, but you'll see here, once a driver kicks in, nothing works. Now obviously, if you were using a modified Windows 7 installation to actually have these drivers installed, you definitely will have much better luck here. We're going to assume you didn't, and obviously we'll run into this issue here. So, no keyboard, how do you proceed? Go ahead and click on this little icon, and turn on the onboard, on-screen keyboard, right over here, onboard keyboard. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and check this, hit apply, and there we go. Looks like we now have this over here. Let me get this out of the way. And let me just go ahead and type a just random username, obviously. A little cumbersome to do this with the mouse. For computer name, I will just name it Test PC. You can always minimize that if it's in your way. It's down here again. Hit next. No password. Obviously, there's no network anywhere. Let's put down I'm in the East Coast. And there we go. Gotta tell you, <laughs> doing this again after many months, uh, I realized just how what a difference it is against uh, installing Windows 10. Much, much easier, much shorter, but eh, a lot of things are missing here that we have to do later on. So right now the computer's gonna do a little quick reboot. 
And as soon as we're done here, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the next few steps. The next thing we should probably do is probably install Windows 7 SP1. You can definitely go ahead and Google this online. You'll probably get, end up at a Microsoft site that will allow you to download the appropriate Windows 7 file for your installation, whether it's 32, 64-bit, and other options you have there as well, too. So much more convenient to actually do this with a screen recorder, but since we have absolutely nothing at our disposal here, so you can connect the microphone to, this might not be too pretty. Let me go ahead and change the resolution here so everything doesn't look so, all these icons look so freaking large. And there we go. So let's just readjust the camera a little bit so you can actually see the full screen. And there we go. So step number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the files that you have copied over. Here's our Windows C drive, and you will see immediately that I do have in this folder here, a bunch of stuff. What do I have here? Basically, we have the Windows 7 SP1. We have uh, the modified USB 3 drivers and other stuff as well too, in the link down here below. You can see that uh, this gentleman I definitely have to give credit for. Put a lot of stuff here already. Modify drivers. This is basically the most important thing we'll probably have to really worry about, but there's actually even drivers here for system. A lot of other stuff here as well too. Storage controllers, obviously. There's our AMD dr uh, driver. Of course, if you're using a NVMe drive, then you have this option here as well too. And some network drivers as well too. Pretty much a whole bunch. I did go ahead and manually download the network driver for this particular motherboard in here, which turns out to be, I actually got it from one of Dell's websites, and that actually worked perfectly fine without any modification. And I also do have the latest chipset driver, uh, basically went on AMD site and downloaded an X470 chipset driver, which is basically the latest version right over here. So first things first, let's go ahead and install Windows 7 SP1 just to get that out of the way. And this process may just take a moment, but hopefully not too long, obviously asking me for permission, etc. Good old fashioned SP1 installation. So this will probably take just a few minutes and I'll go ahead and skip over to the end of the process. And I believe I, I did select to actually reboot on its own. So once it's rebooting, we'll go ahead and continue. All right, looks like the installation's pretty much done, and you'll see here the service packs being processed, and the computer's probably going to reboot once before it continues on. So let's go ahead and skip over to when this is actually done here, and we'll continue with the next step with this uh, wonderful installation. All right, looks like it's almost done here. And so SP1 is now installed. Obviously keyboard and mouse is still not working other than the PS2 one that I uh, have connected here. I'm gonna go ahead and just change the theme here. It's something nice and blue. There you go. All right. Next thing we wanna do is install that little uh, small on standalone installation of uh, little Windows 7 update right over here. I'm gonna go ahead and install that here. And this particular installation, it just allows for certain signed or unsigned drivers to be installed. I did notice without this installation, the drivers do get installed, but are completely blocked out from actually working correctly, which obviously causes an issue because it looks like it's installed, but nothing is working. So we definitely don't want that. Gonna have to reboot again. So let's go ahead and reboot. You probably can install this uh, update after installing drivers, but why do you want to go through the trouble of seeing stuff not working? <laughs> you want stuff just to work the first attempt. It didn't work out for me the first time, so I don't want to put you guys through all through that as well, too. <laughs> now, I definitely can't demonstrate the issues you will have. So we'll see here, Windows 7 um, boot up right over here. Sorry if things are appear out of focus on at times here, but it is what it is. So update processing here yet again. Shouldn't take as long as the one before. 
now we can go ahead and install our chipset drivers now there is a little file that i did mention that i also had because i did run into a little issue here and if you run into it as well too you are fully prepared to get a resolve so let's go ahead open up our magic folder again which i can actually just copy onto here make it a little easier okay so now these two files, the SP1 and that patch, have both been installed. So I'm going to go ahead and try to install our Windows 7, Windows uh, 7 chipset drivers right here. I did also copy this file right over here, and that file here basically is a installation for Visual C++ right over here. And the reason why I did keep this on the side is because the chipset driver is supposed to install on its own, but does have an issue on occasion. So let's go ahead and just try to run this. And you'll see here, it's actually very briefly, you did see it installing. I'm not sure why that popped up, so let's just close it. I actually did see that the first time as well too. And for any reason, your chipset installation gets stuck or hangs like it did a moment ago here and doesn't proceed any further. Just go ahead and just install this file over here you will actually see that it does give you the option to repair and just go ahead and proceed with that. You might actually have to go ahead and reboot. Sorry if that window did come up again, just go ahead and uh, move it aside. And uh, this should probably definitely take care of it for you. After doing this, if it does ask you to reboot, go ahead and reboot and try your chipset installation one more time. All right, looks like our chipset software is up and running. And see here, four little items have been picked up. Just gonna go ahead and hit install. It'll probably just take a moment. So one thing to keep in mind, while during, in, during this installation, while it's installing, a folder was actually created in your main C drive with basically all the drivers that are, can be, or are currently being installed. And one of them is also including SATA drivers and possibly some USB drivers. Now, those USB drivers, which I'll demonstrate over here, unfortunately may not work for this Windows 7 installation. You can actually see here, you navigate over here, installation, chipset drivers, IO drivers, you see all these wonderful looking things here. General, this is actually a pretty good folder here to actually take a look if you do believe some drivers are missing. Sometimes installing chipset drivers for Ryzen CPUs, I've actually noticed that the SATA drivers don't particularly install correctly for SSDs and other mechanical hard drives. Just something to keep in mind there if you're installing this. And I have noticed this happen in Windows 10 as well too. So our chipset driver is now installed. Let's go ahead and take a look at Device Manager. And you will see here that obviously a number of things are still missing, including drivers for the USB ports. And obviously, if I do pull out my wireless keyboard over here, you will still see that it is currently still not working. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Now here comes the slightly troubling part. Not so troubling, but something I had to actually take a moment to really figure out. We have the device manager up here. And we also do have, again, going back to our B550 folder here, we have the extracted, this file right here, obviously this is a raw file or a 7z file, and I actually already have this extracted it right over here. And you actually see here a couple of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get the USB ports working here. So let's see, update driver, gonna browse over to drive C actually right to the folder itself. Here we go. And it's definitely gonna be one of these three here, very likely the first two. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. And you'll see immediately, it is actually ready and prompting us for permission to install our USB 3 driver here. You'll see that this is up and running. 
Now, please take note real quick that as soon as this was installed, you did see another device just appear out of nowhere. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's take care of the other USB one. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the same one here. You'll notice this one probably is not the correct one, so let's go ahead and try the other one. Second one over here. And it looks like that actually did the trick. It's definitely have to be, has to be one of those three. You'll see yet again, another unknown device has appeared. What are these? Well, let's try using the same driver yet again. That one didn't work. Let's try it on the second one. Oh, here we go. Working yet again. Keep an eye on that clock. Oh, looks like we got something being picked up. Quite potentially. And of course, let's go ahead and do the same thing to the other one. Yet again, we're going to go ahead and select the first one here. And you'll see this has yet again installed as well too. So now let's take a look at our USB ports. You'll see a lot of stuff. And of course, my wireless keyboard is now working as intended. So, this actually looks much better here, I have to be honest. But you can actually see here, pretty much had a lot of things installed here already, removed the logos, got the video card drivers over here installed. Obviously there's a very old video card over here, but this is only a test PC. You see all the other stuff here is already installed. And I also brought up this wonderful piece of software right over here. You can actually see it does recognize the Ryzen 3700X CPU. Flip over to main board, you'll see obviously the MPG B550 Gaming Plus motherboard is listed here. And obviously if you go ahead and open up uh, Task Manager once again, you'll see all 8 and 8 16 cores right over here and it's all this wonderful glory as well too. So it seems like this actually has worked and not without obviously some difficulty. Um, that little uh, C++ installation did cause a little bit of issue and also a little bit of time to really get working, but it is actually working pretty well so far after that's taken care of. You can even see here, bus specs, it is recognizing also the PCI Express fourth generation. So if you want to toss in an 90, uh, Samsung 980 Pro SSD, you'll be getting the most maximum and full speed from it as well too. So that's definitely something to look forward to in terms of actually giving that a shot as well. But is Windows 7 possible on uh, B550 motherboards? It absolutely is. A little bit of effort, a little bit of time, and it is definitely working here. Obviously this method uh, is going to leave some questions for sure, so I absolutely do welcome your comments and questions here. By all means, let me know. I'll see exactly how I can absolutely assist. And definitely look forward to future videos involving this kind of uh, experimentation, particularly on 4th uh, generation Series 5000 Ryzen CPUs. I definitely will be posting one of those very soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely shoot a like and subscribe. Uh, any questions, like I said, let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist in any way I can. One little drawback with this method. Uh, I do believe um, there's a particular motherboard manufacturer for one I've been informed by the really wonderful gentleman who has actually uh, been able to provide us with these modified drivers. Uh, AS Rock or another one um, that unfortunately um, this method may not actually work and that's actually due to their BIOS. So this is actually a MSI motherboard has worked. Uh, I have seen that it will work on other motherboards as well too, but if you are having difficulty, let me know what brand, what model motherboard you're having an issue with, and let's see what's going on. Again, thanks again for watching, and I really hope you found this video useful. As always, stay safe.